hi guys so before we get into the video i completely forgot to thank you whilst i was filming this video for almost getting me to 700 subscribers i never thought that i would be near 1k subscribers so if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and honestly thank you guys who who've already subscribed even people who've just watched my video like my video dislike my video everything thank you so much and my videos are going to be more consistent more nursing related videos more hair videos vlogs we're gonna have it all so yeah thank you guys and i will see you soon hi guys and welcome back to my youtube channel i know it's been a while since i've done a nursing related video but today i'm going to be discussing a very very frequently asked question that I always which get. is how much do you earn as a nurse so again if I'm looking down it's because I've got all my notes on my phone so let me start off with some background about myself I am a qualified mental health nurse if you do not know I've been qualified for three plus years and I've worked for the NHS and I've also worked um for private for the private side of healthcare as well um, but currently I am doing agency and bank work and I'll explain what those are so this video is just going to be a overview about the potential earnings that you could get as an NHS nurse I'll also be looking at private healthcare and also agency nurses. by the way I just want to let you know at the end of the video I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of all sectors and how to decide now, what's best for you. The way I've gathered information for this video is I've done research. For the NHS side, it's all on there on for the, the internet. private agency hospital type of nursing, it can differ. And to be honest, all over the country, wages and salaries do differ. So this is just a guide. This is just an estimate. So don't look at it as set in stone. But let's get into the it. The starting salary for an NHS nurse, now that is a general nurse, a mental health nurse, a child nurse and a learning disability nurse. Now midwives, you do start off as a band five. I'm going to put the, um, the band, you know, wages up on the screen. But yeah, as a midwife, you do start off as a band five. But after a few months, you automatically become a band six, whereas... All the other forms of nursing, like I said, general, mental health, child and learning disability, you start off as a band five and in order to progress to band six, you have to be promoted out or go for an interview and things like that. So the starting salary for an NHS newly qualified nurse, which you will get paid band five, is £24,907. Now, please bear in mind, like I said, it does differ dependent on where you are located in the UK, um, more specifically London, you will be entitled to and London weight And the amount that you get from London waiting will differ depending on where you are located in London. I will leave something on the screen here to give you a guide, but you will have to add that on to what I've just said, which is £24,907. So that is how much you will earn. Now, if you were to stay at a band five, say for your first two years, um, your salary, as you can see, will increase. So it increases every two years. Um, but obviously, a lot of nurses do go for promotions, do go for other opportunities or leave a job and maybe go elsewhere. So just bear that in mind. But the starting salary for a nurse is £24,907. Now, private healthcare, according to nurse.co.uk, um, it is pretty much in line with the NHS salary, but you do get a couple of grand so more. In private healthcare, it's very hard to have a definite salary that you will get as a newly qualified nurse because there's different private hospitals and they pay different rates however i've just gone for what i've looked on the job sites i've done a bit of research and i've just gone by what i've seen so the lowest that i saw for a private hospital as a newly qualified nurse is twenty six thousand and ten pounds to thirty thousand six hundred and fifteen pounds and that is for a qualified, newly qualified nurse. 
so as you can see it is slightly more um a few grand more that you can earn in private hospitals but like i said we're gonna go we're gonna look at the pros and cons of all a bit later in this video so now we're gonna look at agency now with agency i'm pretty sure 100 percent of agencies do not accept newly qualified nurses and this is actually a good thing because it does protect you if you're newly qualified um being an agency nurse would be very very difficult because the thing with agency nursing you're gonna get put in a hospital here one day and then another hospital over here one day so you're gonna be moving wards moving hospitals um, different NHS trusts maybe you'll be in a private hospital one week the next week you're with the NHS you know so you've got to be quite equipped with your skills you've got to be adaptable and when you're newly qualified take it from me you just want to get your core skills um, you just want to develop your core skills you just want to be the best nurse and in order to be the best nurse and to really learn and to get your skills set in stone you kind of have to be put you kind of have to allow yourself to be in one place because if you're going all over the place you there's going to be a different way of doing it over here different way of doing things over there and it's going to so they don't tend to take nurses unless you've got at least six months experience in um in a ward or in the community but six months experience post getting your pin so as soon as you get your pin and you start working as a qualified nurse and you go to whatever ward whether it's in a private hospital or an nhs hospital after six months you can apply for agency nursing but obviously that's up to you that's if you feel like you'll be comfortable with doing that personally i didn't think i was ready after six months to do agency nursing um so i i waited quite a while before i went and signed up to an agency so but after yeah. those six months agencies different agencies like private hospitals they pay different rates so i'm just going by what i could find so i found that with agency nursing you can earn from around 28 pounds to 42 pounds an hour so with agency nursing you're not given like a permanent contract so um, that's why they go by hourly rates but what I worked out is that if you was to do so if you was to look at the lowest rate which is 28 pounds and say if you was doing full-time hours you was getting shifts three shifts every week so around 150 hours a month you could earn before tax 50,400 pounds now that's a big big difference yes it's a big difference but like i said we're gonna go into the pros and cons of all three of these a bit later so hold your thoughts i wanted to look at i wanted you guys to get an idea of what the highest paid nurse gets in the UK so if you worked your way up and you became a chief nurse or anything like that how much you could potentially earn because it's good to look in the future and it's good to know what your potential earnings could be um but obviously I know not everybody wants to be a chief nurse not everybody wants to have all that responsibility um but it's just a, it's just a good it's just good to know the highest paid NHS nurse is a band nine role and they tend to be chief nurses or something along those lines so they have a lot of responsibility a lot of responsibility and the earnings for that per year is £91,004 to £104,907 uh, sorry £927 I'll put it on the but, screen um, so this this is how much you could like this is probably the highest you could ever earn as an NHS nurse um so yes yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot of money it's a lot of money but it comes with a lot of responsibility so looking at the other two sectors private and agency nursing it's very hard to find what the highest paid nurse could get because like I said it differs um, you could be you know employed by one private hospital and they pay this rate for like a, a nurse manager and then another private hospital pay, pays slightly less so it's very difficult 
to um, find information on that. But I went on nurse.co.uk and I will leave the link to that because they have very useful information about salaries and wages and all of that. Um, but they did say that private healthcare tends to be quite in line with the NHS. So like a chief nurse of a private um, healthcare, a private healthcare company would kind of earn around the same as an NHS nurse. It might be a couple of grands more, but that's because um, you don't tend to get as much benefits as you do being an NHS nurse. I'll get, I'll explain that a bit more later, but yeah, you'll understand what I mean in a bit. With agency nursing, they tend to only have jobs um, and posts for like staff nurses because that tends to be where they're short if a, if a uh, I keep saying company it's not if a, a healthcare establishment needs a nurse in a managerial position they tend to put the job posts out and they get a nurse that's already within the company to do an acting role so they'll act as a manager until they they actually hire someone for that ro role sorry until they hire someone for that role um, they don't tend to look for agency nurses to do, say, a ward manager, um, to cover a ward manager. But I have seen it, but it's very rare. So because of that reason, it's very hard for me to find, you know, the potential earnings for an agency nurse that was hired to do a managerial post. But if we look at how much an agency nurse can get as you know the lowest nurse grade which is like a band five staff nurse if it's 28 to 42 pounds an hour for a managerial position it's going to be a, quite a lot more than that so basically as an agency you're always going to get paid a little you're always going to get paid more than someone who's actually hired by the nhs trust or by the private hospital that you're fill in the post for one important thing to look at is the average nurse salary so this is looking at oh my gosh my phone has been through it i'm so sorry oh my gosh i'm so clumsy right let's start the again average i look wanted to find out what the average nurse in the uk makes now obviously don't look at this as set in stone if you want to go for a higher nursing position you can get that position this is the average in the uk so obviously most nurses in the uk are band five because that's the most required role you've got less managers you've got less posts for managerial positions because you know you've got more that's that's just how you know the pyramid goes kind of thing so bear that in mind but just because there's less managerial posts doesn't mean you cannot be a manager doesn't mean you can't be a chief nurse but it's just something to bear in mind so according to nurses sorry if you can't tell i've got a speech impediment so it's hard for me to pronounce some words so bear so bear with me according to nurses.co.uk the average nurse earns 33,000 to 35,000 a year. You know, some people might be quite disheartened with that because being a nurse is not an easy job. But, you know, the country we're in, we have a public um, healthcare system. And because it's a public healthcare system, you're, you're not going to get paid as um, high as, you know, other countries where they have private healthcare. That's why in this country, if you do go... Um, to be a nurse in a private hospital, you do get paid more. Um, but obviously, most nurses in this country do work for the NHS. Um, so yeah, the average is 33,000 to 35,000. Let's look at pros and cons of all three. So with the NHS, with the NHS, you do get paid less. Yes, you do. But the NHS does have many, many benefits. Um, the pension is very 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 good you will find that a lot of nhs nurses do retire early comp in comparison to people in other careers because the pension is very good i have um aunties and people i know that were nurses and they retired at 50 55 um so yeah you you, you do have that opportunity to retire early because the pension is really good also they do have a good maternity pay um scheme 
I don't know what you want to call it, the Teddy Pay Scheme. They do have that in place. So if you're looking to, you know, expand your family and you want that security, the NHS is more for you. And also if you have a lot of health problems or, you know, just unfortunately you fall sick, the NHS do have a good sick pay scheme in place. So although you do get paid less, the benefits kind of weigh out also when you're newly qualified you do want to make sure you have a good perceptorship program in place and most nhs trusts do have that in place so on the flip side let's look at private hospitals now the pros private hospitals do pay you a lot they do have some benefits a lot of private hospitals give you free private health care um they offer to pay for your nursing pin because you if you don't know, we have to pay that every year, £120, um, to keep up your registration. So a lot of private hospitals do have to pay that, whereas the NHS However, doesn't. However, some private hospitals, and this is with my own, you know, experience with speaking to my friends who are also nurses, um, they may not have a good perceptorship scheme as, say, the NHS. Um... So yeah, just bear that in mind. If you are look, if you are newly qualified and you do want to go into a private hospital, you've made up your mind. Just make sure their preceptorship scheme um, is good and that they really help to support newly qualified nurses because it's very difficult when you're newly qualified and you've got you're working with people who know, you know, who know the workplace and they know what they're doing. You want to feel supported. So just bear that in mind when you're going to private. Also. Another con of working for private is that with private health care, you have a uh, like a private pension type of thing and they tend to not be as good as the NHS pension scheme. So you, you may not be able to retire as early if you, you know, stayed in private health care. Um, unless you set up like extra pensions and things like that, that's always an option. Um, and also a lot of private health care hospitals do not offer as good um as good i can't my english is terrible today and english is my first language i am wow so a lot of private hospitals do not offer um as good of a maternity scheme as the nhs does same with sick pay some private health care hospitals you know are again this is with my own experience speaking to people they do not like if you unfortunately fall sick they may not pay you sick pay or they may only pay you half the pay whereas with the nhs they do pay you full pay for a certain amount of time depending on how long you've worked for the nhs for so there's pros and cons to both now agency now agency it's it's so attractive because the money you, you you've got the potential to earn so much money another pro is that you choose when you want to work if you don't want to work one week you don't have to work that week because you're not contracted um there is opportunities to get um uh, uh what do they call it it's called block booking so say if you go to a particular hospital or ward and they really like you they might say oh we need um a nurse for this amount of weeks can you just work if because we really like you and you can stay at that place um but it's not really a con it's still not really a contract so you're not you're not contracted to work anywhere so if you want to go on holiday you can go on holiday you don't have to ask anybody to give you annual leave so that's the pro and obviously the money is sometimes triple quadruple of what you can earn for doing the same job working for the nhs or private hospitals however when you're an agency nurse there's no guarantee that you're always going to get shifts now the way things are with the uk covid and everything like that yes we are quite um short staffed um when it comes to nurses so at the moment i'm me myself i actually am doing agency work um and bank work bank is when you you fill posts in the nhs but you're not you're not um contracted and you're not you're not contracted to work for the nhs like you haven't got a permanent contract with the nhs but if they are short somewhere you you go there for the shift or whatever so it's basically like agency but 
um, is for the NHS and you don't you get don't paid get as much um, doing NHS bank as you do agency but it's it's the same type of system you're not contracted to work you pick when you want to work when the shift comes you can choose to do it or you don't but like I said if there's no shifts there and you solely rely your income on agency and bank shifts then you're not gonna get any money so you got to bear that but in a lot mind. Of them do say that they have to travel far because there's no shifts in their area. So you've got to bear that in mind also. And also, I'm pretty sure majority of agencies do not pay sick pay. So if you're sick, you cancel your shift, but you're not going to get paid for it. So you've got to bear that in mind. Also, maternity pay as well. Most of them do not offer that. So you've got to bear that in mind. So what a lot of people tend to do, if they want the benefits of earning more, having more earning potential, they join an agency, but they also have their permanent post with the NHS or a private hospital. And this post could be, you know, a full-time contract or it might be a part-time contract. And then they get the rest of their money doing agency. So there's always ways you can work around it. But please, please look into it. Don't rush into decisions. Because I've rushed into decisions in my career where I've just, you know, I've seen that the opportunity is great and I've not really researched into it. And when I got to the job, it wasn't what all, it wasn't as good as I thought it would if be. If you're newly qualified, please, the most important thing to me, now to you, it's, it's going to differ. But to me, if you really want to be a good nurse, you don't want to, you know, risk losing your pin and things like that and you want to make sure you're practicing in a safe way your main priority is to make sure that wherever you're going to work they're going to be supportive they have certain things in place they've got a good perceptorship program they've got um people that you can talk to they've got counseling um free counseling opportunities because the nhs does provide that a lot of private hospitals do provide that but some agencies, they don't have access to that. The agency I'm with does, but not all agencies do. So please bear these things in mind. I hope this video made sense. Please, please, please leave your questions in the comment section. If you've got any extra questions, I think I will do another video talking about money again. But I will talk about, you know, where, you know, the potential earnings around the world. Because... The good thing about being a nurse is almost like a passport because every country needs nurses. So if you've always wanted to travel, you can go with your degree, you can go with your registration, do the extra training that you may have to do in that country and work as a nurse there. And different countries do pay differently for nurses. So I could look into that. And if you're interested in that, let me know down below because I know there's many people that, you know, They've been working in the UK as a nurse and they, they're thinking about going to work in, I don't know, America, Canada, Africa, the Caribbean. There's so many opportunities. You can work anywhere as a nurse, but it's good to just know how much you could potentially earn. Um, but yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. Other but than that, guys, please comment, rate and subscribe and I will see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.